I remember when I was a senior in high school, all of my friends got into really good colleges. And then there was me. I applied to eight different schools and I didn't get into a single one. At this point, I felt super duper lost and I had no idea what I was going to do. It didn't help that I wasn't passionate about any topics like math or English or history or economics or anything. That was until I took AP Computer Science. For the first time, I was actually pretty good at a class and I genuinely enjoyed learning how to program. I wasn't the best at it, but something about the subject clicked better than any other subject at school. It was at that moment after that class that I knew that I was going to pursue computer science in college, at least try to, and that I would try my absolute hardest to get into a good school, just like my friend. I spontaneously applied to the school called Eastern Michigan University, and I think like a week later, they accepted me, and this was like three days before the cutoff date. And so I decided to go there in hopes to eventually transfer to a better school, and that was the start of my college journey. I would end up graduating from the University of Michigan in May 2020 with a bachelor's in computer science. Hi, my name is Hayon, and I've been a software engineer for over two years now, and I currently work at Audible. I wish they were the sponsor of this video, but um, I guess they sponsored my paycheck, so... Can't really complain about that. In this video, I'm gonna go over my entire degree, going into what class I took and what I recommend based on my entire college experience. Really though, what I wanna show is that even if you don't start at the best school and even if you don't get the best grades, you can slowly improve over time and eventually achieve your goals. All right, let's get into it. All right, so starting off at my freshman year at EMU, since EMU was so close to the University of Michigan, I made it my goal to eventually transfer and then graduate there. Because of this, I try to be as efficient with my time at EMU as possible. So I only took classes that would transfer to U of M and that would actually go to a computer science degree. Luckily, all of the general education classes I needed transferred and I failed all the AP tests, so I just took them again at EMU. These were Chemistry 1, Physics 1, Calculus 1 and 2, First Year Writing, and a Criminology class, which I took for fun. And the only programming class I took that year was Intro to Programming, otherwise known as AP Computer Science. <laughs> yes, I also failed the AP Computer Science test. For some reason, I didn't let that stop me. For those who don't know, this class was in Java and they cover all the basic fundamentals of coding. So variables, loops, if statements, objects, just that general basic foundation. That was actually the only programming class I took EMU because I think the second level class didn't actually transfer. And so I didn't make any progression really as a programmer my freshman year. I ended up spending all of my time at the university trying to get the best grades and write the best essays I could to transfer into Michigan. I'd gotten all A's in all my classes and at the end of the year, my transfer application got accepted and I started my time at the University of Michigan. And oh boy, was I in for a ride. All right, so my sophomore year at Michigan. Okay, I just wanna start this off by saying that these days online, you see people always talk about how what college you go to doesn't really matter. But truthfully, I personally think that between some universities, they can have a huge difference in the level of education. When I first started at Michigan, it was way more difficult than EMU. Remember how I said I got all A's? Yeah, I would not see another A for a really long time. And so sophomore fall, I took two computer science classes. I took EECS 203, which was discrete mathematics, and EECS 280, which was the second level programming course. I don't even know how to define discrete math. It's like math that's discrete. Let me look it up. Yeah, the definition here says discrete mathematics is the study of mathematical structures that can be considered discrete rather than continuous. Okay, but how I would describe the class is really the foundational theoretical math that goes behind a lot of computer science concepts. So you cover things like basic algorithms, proofs, time complexity, etc. Honestly, I don't really use these concepts day to day at my job. I was just trying my best to get by and I ended up getting a B minus in the course. X280 was the second level programming class and it covered topics like basic data structures, object oriented concepts like polymorphism and inheritance, and we learned about C++. Learning C++ while trying to do a good job on the projects themselves was super difficult, especially because the first three programming courses at U of M are kind of like weeder courses. And that is a time when most of the people drop out of the CS program. I ended up getting a B plus, which was actually pretty motivating for me because I wasn't really that close to failing. And for reference in the College of Engineering, a C minus is considered failing. And yeah, we'll see plenty of those. <laughs> But yeah, when you got a C, you were dangerously close to failing. Finally, I took Physics 240, which is electricity and magnetism, which was really freaking hard, and I got a C plus. And then I took American Culture 334, which was race and gender studies in video games. I think I just saw video games in the title, and I got really excited, and so I took that course. 
and I ended up getting a B plus there. During the winter of my sophomore year, I took three computer science courses. The first was EECS 281, which is your standard data structures and algorithms course. It covered topics from hash tables, trees, graphs, sorting algorithms. At the time, I didn't realize that you needed this stuff for technical interviews, so I really wish I paid better attention and I did better in the class because I basically had to learn everything twice by studying it on my own. Oh well. The second class I took was EECS 370, which is Intro to Computer Organization. And it focused on a lot of lower level stuff, so things like bits and assembly and state machines, and I struggled a lot in that class. You never see these topics day to day, at least I haven't in my jobs, but I think it is good to know how things work behind the scenes, especially because we work on computers all the time. And the third class I took was EECS 398, which was Computing for Computer Scientists. Real original name. This was just a one credit class and it covered topics like bash and scripting and git. It was more or less like a Linux 101. It was a great class and it really made me appreciate the command line which I use every single day today. I ended up getting a C plus in X281, a C in X370, and an A plus in X398. But that doesn't count, it's a one credit class. So yeah, I was dangerously close to failing two core CS classes and I barely managed to scrape by. But you know what? I passed, I passed baby, that's all it takes. And lastly, I took Calculus 4, otherwise known as Differential Equations and Intro to the New Testament for more requirements for my degree. I got a B minus in Calc 4 and did a pass fail on the New Testament class and I just passed it. And so at this point, I had a 2.461 GPA, which is so bad, but you know what? I didn't fail anything yet. What matters is I made it through. That's all it takes. I'm still here. I got the same degree as everybody else. Just gotta keep going. All right, so now entering junior year at Michigan. At U of M, after you take data structures and algorithms, you can declare your major in computer science. At this point, all the upper level classes are your oyster and you can pick whatever topic interests you. And the classes that I took my junior year were by far the most helpful for me to this day. So during the fall, the CS classes I took were EECS 376, Foundations of Computer Science, and EECS 381, which is Advanced Object-Oriented Programming. So EECS 376 was another one of those theoretical math courses rooted in computer science. And honestly, I barely remember what we actually covered in that class, so let me look it up. Yeah, we covered things like diagonalization, reducibility, P or NP completeness. I actually forgot all of these concepts existed. Um, Again, it was one of those courses where I just try to pass and I ended up getting a B plus in the class, which is like surprisingly good for me. Now, EECS 381, the other programming class I took that fall, this class probably changed me the most as a programmer. This class was very notorious for how difficult it was. The projects you write in the class are not only checked for correctness, but they're checked against a style guide as if you were following a company style guide. And the way that the professor actually checked for style was by printing out the code onto pieces of paper and looking at it and going over it by hand. Even though I don't necessarily agree with that approach, I think it was still a really great experience having someone look at my code in that much detail. And to this day, I always think about future readers in mind when it comes to writing my code and writing it well in that aspect. And the projects themselves were based on difficult object-oriented problems that require you to know design patterns to solve. So things like the factory pattern, singleton pattern, adapters, observers, there's a lot of different design patterns and we kind of combine them all together into these projects. I learned so much from this class and I ended up getting a C in the class. <laughs> Not even close, baby. But seriously, this is one of those classes where I learned so much and my grade didn't really reflect that. I just barely passed, but I learned so much and I still use a lot of what I learned to this day. Lastly, that semester I took Stats 250, which is Intro to Stats and Technical Communication 300. Technical communication was just these writing courses for engineers at U of M because we can't write normal essays, apparently. And the stats class I really struggled in for some reason, even though it was just an intro level class. Supposedly they made the class harder and um, I believe it, I got a C in that class. We don't talk about that. <laughs> During my winter semester, I ended up only taking one programming course and that was EECS 482, which is operating system. Now this is another one of those classes that was really difficult and it was known for being difficult at U of M. And there was actually two versions of the class. There was a four credit version and a six credit version. The six credit version fully utilized everything that the lectures taught while the four credit one 
omitted some of them. So you end up learning the concepts better by taking the harder version. This course is actually not required at U of M and I know a lot of colleges do, but if your school doesn't require it as well, I really recommend taking it. You work with things like threads, disk reads and writes, CPU scheduling, etc. These are concepts I've used in all of my jobs and I could not have imagined trying to learn these for the first time while on the job. And I ended up getting a B minus in this class. Additionally, I took Linguistics 316, Math 214, which was Linear Algebra, and Musical 121, The Art of Music, where I got an A minus, B minus, and B plus respectively. My first real A <laughs> at U of M. This was also the summer I got an internship in Chicago working at a trading company. I have a video all about my internship, so go ahead and check that out. Finally, we come to my senior year. And so my senior year at this point, my senioritis was kind of kicking in and I just wanted to pass so I could graduate. And I spent a lot of time actually focused on getting a job. Because I was focused on getting a job, I took some lighter CS courses. So I took EX481, which is software engineering, and EX489, which is computer networks. Now the software engineering course was a great course. They covered everything in the world of software engineering because up until this point, we focused so much on coding and a lot of math. And so these are topics like how to test properly, the different kinds of testing, um, software development practices like Agile and Waterfall, continuous integration, build systems. There's a lot of content that they covered in this class and like basically each one of those topics alone would be hard to make a really big class around, but because they all combined them together and you learned all these things together, gave a great holistic view of software engineering. It also had my most favorite lecture out of anyone at U of M. He was great and I ended up getting a B in the class. Computer networks, on the other hand, I don't really remember that much about, to be honest. I remember how they talked about how the internet works, different protocols, how packets are sent, just those general topics. I got to be in this course too. I also took video game music and music theory 137, intro to music theory, which I got an A and an A minus in. The video game music class was great because all we did was just listen to music in class and that was a great time. And then finally, winter 2020, it was a very famous winter. It was the one that got disrupted by COVID. There was only one last requirement I needed to actually get my computer science degree, which was to complete a major design project. At Michigan, to graduate in computer science, you have to take a course where the entire course, you just focus on making one really big project. And that's what we call EECS major design project. I took one called EX497 Human Centered Software, which was structured around coming up with a user or an avatar and developing software around that user to meet their needs. What we made was an app that would find sublets and show sublets hosted by other students. And you would like verify using your student email. It was just like a niche use case that everybody kind of used like Facebook groups for and just to kind of solve that problem. Our app kind of sucked, but I mean, it was still a fun project to work on. I also took EX493, which was user interface development, which was just a basic web development UI UX course. And also I took philosophy 101. Since I already made an easy schedule for myself and the teachers got really lenient after COVID struck and lectures became online and deadlines got constantly pushed back. These were my best grades by far during college. I got an A in EX497, an A in EX493, a B plus in philosophy, and A's in like the supplementary courses to the major design course. We just had like these writing courses. That last semester really helped bump up my GPA and I ended with a 3.061. And I, I just barely got above the three range. I don't even, I didn't even know that I got above the three range, but yeah, nice. Yeah, we got there and then we got the degree. I've come to realize that just generally in life, I always start off slower than a lot of my peers. I transfer up colleges, I catch up in computer science courses, I get worse grades. At the end of the day, I still made it to the top tech companies with them and I ended up getting the same degree. If I were to change anything about my college experience, I don't really regret anything, but if I were to change anything, I just wish I tried harder in high school. Like I can kind of see a snowballing effect from high school. If I passed my AP tests and if I got into a good college off the bat, I would have saved myself so much time. I would not have had to take all those general education courses again. And I would have been able to take more upper level computer science classes. Those are like the really important ones in my opinion. You learn so much there. I strongly believe like the upper level courses where you really develop a super strong foundation as a programmer, as a software engineer. Truthfully, I think it's just better to get it all out the way when you're in college and to push yourself while you're there. I hope you learned something from this video. 
If you did, please give it a like and consider subscribing and leave a comment about your background. I'm curious about what everybody's background is regarding CS and maybe you're already working and you just watched this video just to reminisce. If you enjoyed it, I hope to see you around. I will catch you guys in the next one.